everybody, welcome back to Jamea's promo, and today we will be having our first look and official hands-on with the brand new Samsung One UI 3.0, which also brings you Android 11. We'll also be doing a direct comparison versus Samsung One UI 2.5, which is running on Android 10. And I do want to give a big thank you and shout out to my buddy Rida for making sure that we have the software up and running today. So make sure that you watch this entire video. There is a lot of changes, a lot of upgrades, a lot of additions into Samsung One UI 3.0. Oh, and I'm super excited to show you as many things as I can in this one video. And one feature that's brand new that I'm in love with is the ability of doing double tap to sleep. So over here on Samsung One UI 2.5, running on Android 10, you're not able to do a double tap to turn off the display. You are able to turn it on, but right over here on Samsung One UI 3.0, you're able to do a double tap to make it go to sleep. It actually makes it super easy and convenient. And now that we're kind of going inside of the lock screen, I'm gonna show you the updated lock screen on Samsung One UI 3.0. So when you give this one a double press, you're gonna see that the fingerprint sensor has changed, it's updated, the animation of when it pops up has also changed, and it's also a little bit larger area of an icon that you can see here. So you can see that that pops up. Also too, you do have a lock icon on the very top in the middle, uh, and then you're still gonna have your two icons on the bottom. Now taking a look at the volume rocker, everything has been updated and changed as well as moved. So in Samsung One UI 2.5, this is what you're used to. This is what it looks like. You have your down arrow to expand everything. Now on the 3.0, it's gonna be moved over here. You're gonna have this little area that you're able to you know, bring up or down your volume. Really nice animations. You can also tap on this icon if you want it to be vibrate or if you want it to be sound on. Uh, and then if you hit on those three dots, it's going to expand it. So this way you can tap really any of these if there's any of these that you would like to change. So if you wanna change your notifications, you tap on it, you move it up and down. Uh, here is going to be your system. If you need to tap on it, bring it up and down. This is gonna be the icon for your uh, live caption. If you want live caption to be on, if you're watching YouTube, but you have to have the volume down. And then you just go inside of your settings. And then this is where you can toggle on, uh, use volume keys uh, for your media. So this is actually pretty nice right here. I do like this brand new setup. For right now, I'm gonna bring it all the way back down inside of Vibrate. So let's head inside of the phone application. I'm gonna show you a really cool change in addition. I would be going inside of the menu settings, but that's a little bit longer segment. So I'm gonna save that for last. We're gonna cover all of these smaller ones first. So one of the cool things that you're able to do is let's say that you go inside of your phone dialer. Now, when you go inside of the settings, there's a brand new thing that was added in and it's the way that you're able to change your call background. So everything else is gonna be pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside of the call background. And the cool thing here is you can change the layout of what it looks like. So if you wanted to have a larger icon, the name on the top, you can have that one. And you can also choose this option here. So I'm gonna keep it with the brand new one on the top. Then you can also change your background. So it's gonna pull something uh, that was already you know, uh, pre-installed so if you want to have a small little video, you can see it's kind of pulsating, it's changing, or you can pull from your own gallery. So you can see one over here that's a little video, and then this one is going to be an image. So if you wanted your, your background to be you know, this image here, which actually looks really cool, uh, you can have it set up this way. You can also have it set up for a video. So I created a small, tiny video, and the cool thing is that you can also use the video sound as the ringtone. So specifically just for this demo, you can see it's a video, there's a little bit of music or audio that's a part of it, and then if you wanna to listen to it, you can, you can take a listen here. I do have the media down. So all I stated was, hey man, you're getting a phone call. So every time that someone's calling me, it's, that's gonna be my ringtone, and then this is what I see. Oh, and if you guys are brand new here at the channel of Jimmy's Promo and you appreciate these tips, tricks, and tutorials and an early look at Samsung One UI 3.0, make sure you guys hit on that subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications so you get notified for all future videos. So let's head inside of the camera. There's also a small addition and change and update in here. So let's say that you're taking a picture and you wanna have that auto exposure lock or auto focus lock. So when you tap on the screen here, this is where you can tap. You're able to focus in that area of the image. Then you also have your brightness control here. So you can shift this around if you need it brighter or darker. You'd also be able to do a press and hold to lock in that lock of auto focus and auto exposure. Now over here, it's gonna look just a little different. So this one is just a different icon letting you know that it is locked. Uh, so you can see here as well that that little brightness bar is going to move along with it. It's not stationary. It's not this long little thing right there. So if you wanted to lock in your exposure and autofocus, you can put it there. And then if you needed to change your brightness, you're going to have this small dial right there. 
So now that we're inside of an application, I'm going to show you a few of the different animations uh, when you're kind of closing and opening applications. So let's say that we swipe on up. You can see that this one over here is just a little bit quicker, a little bit more smooth. Also too, it'll be pretty much the exact same if I was to, uh, let's say, go back. So I think that they made the animations a little bit better on 3.0. Same thing too, when you were to do a press and hold on any of these icons, they kind of made the icons look a little bit more flat. So the way that this one over here, which is the 3.0, it looks a little bit more flat. This one's a little bit more animated. Uh, it's bouncy. You can also see that they changed the way that this right here looks as well too. Uh, I mean, it looks really good. I'm glad that they're making all these small, subtle changes. Same thing when it comes down inside of your folders. Uh, nothing's really changed here except for how uh, the background is kind of blurred out, as you can tell there. Same thing here. So if I was to pull down and go inside of my notifications panel, you can see that this is way more blurry than what it is over here. Uh, so it's almost like they added in a few of the, the uh, modules of GoodLock that's kind of pre-installed. So let's kind of push this down. Here is the updated look of what the settings menu looks like. Here's the quick settings. Uh, a couple things that has changed. So over here, you have a thing that is called power mode. Now inside of power mode, this is where it can change between high performance, optimized, medium, and maximum power saving. Now over here, what you have is, let's say that we press and hold here. This is gonna be a power saving mode. Now inside of power saving mode, it's gonna be similar to this medium power saving right here. And inside of this one, this is where you can change the brightness, the screen resolution, limiting. And so it's gonna be just a little bit easier for you to just turn things on or off. So if you wanted to have, let's say, uh, you're always on display still to be on, but you wanted to limit your CPU to 70%. So you can see this is just a small little uh, menu change. But the other thing I wanna make sure you guys know is that this one's only that power saving. That's that medium power. So Samsung actually split these up in different quick settings. So over here is gonna be your minimum battery use. This minimum battery use is the same as maximum power saving. So if you tap on the words below it, it's just gonna let you know to extend your battery life will block apps from using data or your location in the background and apply dark mode with a simplified home screen. If you wanna take a look, this thing is actually super quick. It gets into it way faster than the older uh, user interfaces. And then if you wanted to get out of this one, you just go back inside of normal power use and it brings it right back over. It is super quick. Now the other one is gonna be enhanced processing. Enhanced processing is the same as high performance. So if you want to uh, get faster data processing for the most demanding apps and games, but it also uses more battery. Again, this is gonna be the same as high performance. So really all they did in 3.0 was they split these into three different categories. So it's not gonna be confusing in this one area. Uh, so if you just wanna do power saving, boom, one touch of the button, you're there. If you wanna go inside of uh, uh, high performance, boom, one button right there instead of going inside of a menu and changing it there. Now, where these ones are located when you first get the phone is that you are gonna to have to go inside of your top right-hand side, you go inside of your edit buttons, and it's gonna be sitting on the top up here. And then you just simply drag and drop it and move it wherever you want it to go for whatever makes sense for you. A nice improvement will be inside of the recent menu. You can see that the animation has been updated, changed. When you scroll between different applications, it's kind of like a circular change. One's kind of coming in as the other one is going out. Uh, also, when you flip through all of them pretty quick, it's actually really smooth. Again, nothing's really been changed or added here. GoodLock is not even installed. Over here, it's turned off. This is what it looks like stock. It's just a flat uh, you know, swipe between the different rectangle applications. Uh, even when you scroll between all of them, they're not as quick than what it looks like here on 3.0. So let's take a fast look at some of the changes with the quick settings, then we'll go inside of uh, the main settings menu there. So right here, this is what the 2.5 looks like. Uh, it's gonna be whatever you're familiar with. This is what it looks like right over here. Uh, and then you can see the date and the time moved from this kind of middle left over inside of the middle right there. Uh, these buttons that were right there, that's pretty easy for you to tap with your thumb is now gonna be on the very top. And then also too, on 2.5, your, your smart things and all your Bluetooth connected devices and anything you can connect to was down here on the very bottom right. And then now they're gonna be right here. So it's probably more of a focal point of, hey, here's your quick settings, easier for you to reach with your thumb. You can easily get into these two areas, which we want you to use because it was kind of hidden there. Your date and time, right dab smack in the middle, and then you have the rest on the very top. 
So let's go inside of the settings menu. There's been a lot of things that's moved around. Uh, so your little profile that was on the top right is now front and center. If there's any changes you need to do. You can also see that some of the groupings and changes, uh, some of the wording, it's just kind of all moved around. I think that they did a better job with this one here, the way that it's all lined out. But there is going to be a few changes in different areas. Uh, so first off, let's go inside of connections. One of the brand new things is going to be Android Auto which is again a part of Android 11 and 3.0. Now when we move on back, there really is no changes with the sounds and vibrations, but there is gonna be a change with notifications. Now inside of notifications, one of the main big changes is gonna be this right here that is called brief pop-up settings. This is actually uh, your edge screen or your edge lighting. So we'll get to that here in just one second. So you can see some of your recently sent notifications. You can also show how you want things to pop up. Uh, it's gonna look a little bit different over here, but you can either have a detailed list, but when you do detailed, your uh, little pop-up quick settings disappeared. When you move inside a brief, this is where you have um, the, the brief pop-up settings. Again, this is where your edge lighting is. Now back on 2.5, it was inside of display and then it was inside of the edge screen. So this was completely moved inside of notifications, which makes sense. When you get a notification, this is what's really running. And then you can change your edge lighting style on whatever you want it to look like. And that's what that little quick settings looks like right there. Uh, edge lighting, let's go to edge lighting. So you can notice that it's gonna, you know, kind of have a little bit of a change, a little bit of an update, a little bit more circular of a notification versus this kind of rectangle that was on the left-hand side. Uh, but let's say that we move on back because inside of here, one of the very important things is that everything that you select, it actually works. I remember a lot of people always state, hey, I love edge lighting, but it does not work with Hangouts. It also does not work with Google Messages. So I am happy to say that I have already tested it. I've had uh, messages with my buddy Brett. Uh, it works, edge lighting works with Hangouts and it works with Google Messages and everything else on this phone. So very excited to let you guys know that it literally works with every application. So you shouldn't get somebody writing a comment below the video stating, hey, my edge lighting doesn't work. Uh, it's been improved and now fully working on 3.0. Now going inside of the display menu, really everything is pretty much the exact same. You're gonna have right there where it says your motion smoothness, your screen resolution. Uh, here's where your edge panels are. So if you do need to work with your edge panels, uh, this is where the settings are. It's still inside of your display. Now underneath wallpaper, uh, there has been an update and change when it comes down to the wallpaper services. So I'm also happy to say that I love using dynamic lock screen. And one of the cool things that they added in is way more categories. So originally with the categories in 2.5, you only had five of them. Now you got six, seven, eight, nine, you have 10 of them. One of them is actually referred to as special. Don't really know what that is. Maybe it's a mixture of all of these, uh, but I haven't really looked too in depth on that one, but uh, a lot of changes there with the, the wallpapers. So moving on back. Now, when it comes down to the lock screen, biometric security, privacy, location, accounts and backup, Google, a lot of these things are pretty much the exact same. Nothing really to note there. But when you go inside of advanced features, this is where you're also gonna see a couple different changes. Uh, inside of advanced features, you're gonna see where it says your side key, your Samsung Dex, Bixby routines, call and text and other devices, link to Windows. Uh, but let's just go inside of here, motions and gestures. Now inside of motions and gestures, this is where you're able to turn on the ability of double tap to wake and also double tap to sleep. One of the things I love about this one is you just be able to double tap anywhere. You're able to turn off the display without having it to time out or hitting on your little side key. You also see there's a couple different changes here, nothing really to uh, you know kind of report on other than the new addition of double tap to sleep. Now, double tap to sleep will work only really when you're inside of your normal home screen. So if you're inside of here and you double tap it, it will not work. Just make sure you're inside of the home for that to work. One hand mode has been the same, game launcher is the same, dual messenger, video enhancer. So all of these are really the same, but you're gonna have just a couple new features inside of that menu there. Uh, scrolling down, digital well-being, parental controls is the same. Uh, battery and device care, it's pretty much the same. I don't think really anything has really changed. So let's say we go inside of device care, you're gonna notice that you're gonna have kind of like a graph and a history right here. So this little icon that you just saw that I tapped on was underneath this more option. And then this little insights icon is just right up there. So they moved just two things 
uh, really no big deal with this with this menu here. Uh, and then when you scroll down to apps, it's the same, general management's the same, accessibility is the same, uh, really everything else is the same. But the way that it looks, uh, the animations has also been updated. When you press and hold, uh, this has been a little bit of an update. Uh, you also have, again, the major differences is power mode. You had to go inside of here to choose between four different options. This time, it's just all gonna be uh, separate. So if you wanna go inside of your power saving, you tap it. Your minimal battery use, which is the, uh, uh, what was that one called again? That was called the maximum power saving. And then you also have your enhanced processing, which is also referred to as high performance. So that's pretty much it for today's video. I mean, some of the things that just stand out in my brain is just the ability that you can change the background inside of your phone dialer. You also have double tap to sleep. The lock screen has been updated and changed and I feel like it's a little bit more responsive. You also have uh, your, your brand new edge lighting that is located somewhere else. Again, if you try to find edge lighting, you won't find it. It's inside of your notifications, referred to as brief pop-up settings, as long as you have brief turned on and not your detailed. And again, it does work work so far with every single application I've tested along with Google Hangouts and as well as Google Messages. So make sure you guys stay tuned to this channel. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the bell for notifications. I'll have more videos coming out on Samsung One UI 3.0. I wanted to do one video kind of going over everything and then I'll come out with more individual videos going more in depth, uh, more singular, you know, featured videos coming out for Samsung One UI 3.0 if you wanna see more. Now, just as a reminder, today is September 15th. This one is the beta version. This is brand new, just kind of started off on this whole program here. So I don't believe 3.0 is gonna be available and pushed out for updates probably until November. So just keep that in mind. It's gonna be underneath beta for at least you know five or six weeks just to make sure everything looks good, kinks are out, and everything is ready for a full-on launch. But hope you guys have liked this video. If you guys did, please give this thing a huge thumbs up. Don't forget to hand subscribe. Subscribe right over here in the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, the more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.